everyone! A little while ago I put up a video of my student Kayla learning to sing and play the harp for the first time. It was so exciting to share with all of you and I had some amazing feedback from people saying that it was really inspiring and encouraging and some of you particularly who are wanting to learn to sing and play the harp yourselves found it just such a wonderful thing to witness how Kayla um, progress so much within one lesson. So if you missed that video then make sure you click the link that's on the screen now and go and watch that. But I've got another one for you today with my amazing student called Gerard. He is from the Netherlands and at the time of this lesson he is staying in Bali which is pretty crazy on the other side of the world. I've never been to Bali and what Gerard was really learning in this lesson is how to make his pieces more fluent and stay within the tempo of the piece without slowing down when the sections get a little bit difficult. And so we looked at how to look ahead, how to place his fingers in advance, and we applied this in two different pieces, and then you'll see in the third piece that he's really doing it so beautifully. If you're interested in the pieces that we were playing, there's links down below, so you can check that out too. And if this is the kind of video that you would really like to see more often, I have great news for you. I'm going to be doing this regularly on my Patreon page. I'm going to be putting up videos at least once a month of this type of content. And so if you're willing to put towards a little bit of your money towards seeing this kind of supplementary content, you'll see these types of videos and so much more over on my Patreon page. So go and check out the link in my description box. I really think it's going to be helpful for other harpists out there and maybe even harp teachers who'd be interested in seeing this type of video. Otherwise, I'll see you again at the end of the video. I hope you enjoy it. So I can hear that you changed some of the things that we talked about. So well done. Would you would you like to play that through one more time just to show me maybe it will um, go a little easier the second time? Let's do that. Well done. That's great. So, um, yeah, it comes to the did you have any, it comes. Did you have any questions about the piece? No, no. Actually, it's uh, it's just sits into. Uh, I find it quite relaxing. So now that it goes quite smooth, it it plays it plays easier, and you don't really have to. Well, normally not have to think about it anymore, and then it just goes. And I guess that that is where most of the pieces, will, when they're getting longer, uh, will go to. That's apparently what happens when it gets longer and longer, then you're uh, having to yeah, remember it more. It takes more time to get it into your head. Um, well, so it has to get into your hands. Yes. That's the most interesting <laughs> So and I noticed that through the whole week. The week. It goes more and more into your hands, mm -hmm. and in some things, like okay, just I can almost a certain portion playing like blind. You're not even looking anymore. You just play it. It's really interesting to see that. So one thing I noticed was um, once you've played one measure, um, there was sometimes um, a bit of a pause to figure out where the left hand needs to move to. Um, so once you played like the C. And then you have to find the F. So what I would suggest is 
for you to, um, every time you're playing a measure, to be looking ahead to the next measure and finding that note with your left hand. So as soon as you've played the C and your right hand is playing the E and the G, your left hand should already be getting ready on that F. So like this, I'm ready on the F, so then I'm ready to play immediately. And the same here with the G, I'm ready on the G, and then I'm ready to play straight away. So why don't we try those first few measures and see if you can just um, practice doing that. Get that F ready as soon as you've played the C in the left hand. And you can actually even have your left hand um, on that F, waiting on that F. You can touch it and actually have the finger ready on there. Yes. Great. So once you play this one, you should be back here too, right? Just yes. Ahead of it. Yes. So now that you know the notes, it allows you to think ahead to what is coming next. Okay. That will be great. Fantastic. That's already sounding um, much smoother. So maybe you can practice, when you're practicing this piece, that will really take it to the next level, I think. Okay. But other than that, it's sounding like good. Okay. Would, would you like to yeah, have a look at um, the four-finger etude again now? Um, well, we can, uh, we can look at that as well. Okay. Okay, so let's look at, uh, it's really the same thing in four finger etude. Um, you can place all four fingers on the strings that are coming next. So after you've played the C here, once you've played that C in the right hand, and that note is free, you can immediately put the whole, all four notes of the left hand down. And then you're going to move the right hand up as well. Every time you need to be placing all four fingers onto the strings with, while the other hand is playing. So let's try doing that. Okay, so that was already better. Um, sometimes sometimes your, your hand was hovering near the notes, and then when it came to that hand, then you played the notes. But I want you to actually have the hand on those strings in preparation. Let's try it again. Okay, I'll, I'll add something else that I think might help as well, another comment. Um, firstly, I think we can take it a little slower than that because that's a good speed to play it um, when, when you perform. But when we're trying to, um, 
change something about the technique. You can take it a lot slower than that. But but also, um, I think it will help if you think about where your eyes are looking while you're playing. So the natural thing is for um, when you're playing with one hand, for your eyes to be looking at that hand. And then when your other hand starts playing, for your eyes to be looking there. But um, what we want to try and work on is you, while you're playing, your eyes don't have to look at that hand. Your eyes can look at where the next hand is, is placing. So it kind of, it, it's, yeah. um, it's like something that's so natural in our brains to be looking where our hands are moving, but we want to try and shift that to be looking ahead to the next hand. So take it a lot slower and see if you can do that a little bit more. It's really weird if you go to the slow. It's hard, eh? You're already used to it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> Yeah, we'll have to practice that then more or really do it in a slow fashion. Yes. And I'm still too late. But it's better. So that was already a lot better, but you want to try and do it even earlier. And um, it is. It feels like you're taking a step back by playing it slowly now, um, and by having to think ahead like this. But you're actually taking a leap forward, even though it feels slow. Because um, what you've been practicing up to this point is to be able to play these notes while you're looking at that hand. But it means that we're limiting how fast we can play and how we can make the piece flow in the longer term. So by taking it slower and thinking ahead to what the next hand is happening um, or what is about to happen in the next hand, I think it's actually taking you much further than if you were to continue like you're playing it. So don't be discouraged if it feels like taking steps back. I think it's going to no, be... No, no, because there is other, the other thing that you practice actually was stepping forward. Which you're not looking at all, you know. This one I can play now without it watching you, and not even. And that that was really funny because a few months ago I didn't even know how to do this at all. So you know that you're making that kind of progress. It yes. just yeah, it just grows. It grows into your brain apparently that these kind of movements are something be slowly becoming natural. Yeah. It is. It is. In my in my experience is it's so very similar to learning how to play bowling when i was doing those kind of classes it was similar to what i've what i'm doing right now with you and what i've done with a few other teachers so far i know that sometimes it has to be two steps back to make indeed the leap forward and this is exactly why i'm having your classes because that's that's what's going to bring it in the in the future and you can't do this in a week's time. You can't do this in a few months. It's going to take yeah, a couple of years before you're there and before you really feel like, okay, this is what it's supposed to be. And this is how it was when I was a lot, lot earlier in this game. Yes. But it, it's, it's very, very similar to what I'm doing there. That's great. It's interesting. Yeah, it can yeah. be. Um, it's so great that you're seeing things from that perspective because I think sometimes when you have it, um, when you're learning something on your own, you want to learn things quickly and you feel like you're making progress, but actually you're skipping out some things that means you're not going to be able to get further than a certain point. So even though sometimes I'm saying, I'm pulling you back and saying, let's take a step back and get this solid, it's actually going to allow you to keep progressing. Okay. So I'm good. glad you good. can. I'm happy. <laughs> and I'm happy you noticed it. And you happen to basically I'm just take it back and see where it moves us uh, further from here. So that's great. I'm happy awesome. about that. So it will be <laughs> Good. <laughs> so let's have a look how we can um, apply this type of thing in Flight of the Heron as well. Yeah, that one is uh, where you're basically supposed to look ahead as well, because otherwise <laughs> it won't flow at all. 
It's interesting that. Yeah. on I just have to stop you and say congratulations because you played that so beautifully okay. you, were looking, practice. you were looking yeah. ahead to all the notes you were playing it flowing in time it was beautiful okay. well done. Good. thank you wasn't that a wonderful thing to see? Well done to Gerard. I think he's making such amazing progress with his lessons and you should hear how often he's practicing. This guy is practicing every day for so many hours and I think it's such a wonderful thing to see his progress. So if you, another thing I wanted to mention is that I do have one or two more slots for Skype students. So if you saw this lesson and you just thought, I have to have Christy Lynn teaching me to play the harp, then the good news is that you can. Just pop me an email. My um, email address is down in the description box and I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, if it's your first time watching my YouTube channel, then make sure you subscribe because I post videos like this every week. I'd love to see you back again next time and I'll see you next week Thursday. Bye!